Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not care Everything to God we pray Oh, have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord. Can we find a friend so faithful? Oh, who will all our sorrow share? And Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come, bird with the Lord of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Oh, take it to the Lord and pray. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find the soulless thing. So what a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear Oh what a privilege to carry Everything to God and pray We often forfeit And oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not carry Everything to God and pray All because we do not carry everything to God in just keep singing that song over and over and over again. High fives. I do. I almost feel like we just, if we just kept singing that song over and over and over again to get it in our spirits deeper and deeper. And what a friend we have in Jesus. And the author of this study wrote a, a song and uh, uh, the title of the song was, you know, Jesus is the best friend he ever had. And I mean, all our sins and griefs to bear, you know, what peace we often forfeit, what needless pain we bear, 
Why? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Church, those little moments where it just seems like he's not there. It seems like he doesn't care. It, just, it seems like. You know, when Mary could not find him, the, the gardener spoke to Mary, Magdalene. And Mary did not understand it was Christ, the resurrected Christ, speaking to her. And I think there's times I don't realize that that's the Lord speaking. That's God. I'm still slowly learning. So chapter 3 tonight, page 9 in your studies, what the Bible teaches about mercy. This study talks about being wise in our own eyes, how that's a downfall. It speaks about what is a calamity to the soul. Also on the positive side, it talks about a grateful heart. A heart that is full of gratitude unto the Lord. This chapter talks about fear and in a very interesting way. It gives the remedy. I read a book by Thomas Brooks years ago. I think Brooks wrote in the 1600s. The title of the book was Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices. There's a remedy. Even when Satan came to Christ 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness, he came quoting scripture. <laughs> and yet Christ had a remedy. And there always is a remedy. There always is an answer. There always is a friend. Though at times it doesn't seem like it. So let's start on page 9. Psalm 118 is what he's looking at. Again, he's just, in my opinion, building a, a scriptural foundation pertaining to this word called mercy. Psalm 118, verses 1 through 5. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy, Hesed, is forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy is forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy is forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy is forever. Encouraging us to just say it. You know, I've been encouraging those who have a testimony or a word to bring it on Sunday. I think that verse in 1 Corinthians, whoever has a, a word or a tongue or a testimony and here the author is saying, you know, let the house of Tichi, let the house of Palmer say that God is good. You say, well, why do we need to say it? I mean, he's already good. Well, what if I just said that to my wife? Why do I need to say I love you? You kind of know I love you. I'll just go the rest of my life and never say it to you. That wouldn't be kind. So it's good to say it. Plus, our... The words of God praise when it goes out to the spirit realm, it dispels the evil forces. You're, you're coming against them with something that they hate. They hate to hear praise of God. They hate it. So do, do it all the more. I called upon the Lord in distress. I think we've all been there. We've all been in distress. And yet he called upon the Lord. Like Jonah called upon the Lord in the belly of that fish. The Lord answered me. We could pause right there and say, is that not a friendship? Is that not intimacy? Is that not a relationship? Sometimes I want to ask Christians, do you have a relationship with God? Well, I'm a Christian. Well, yeah, you know, I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Scottish man. I'm a whatever else. I met with a man today, he said he doesn't know if he's Irish, Italian, or Scottish. I just told him I'd pray for him. Sounds like he's got a lot going on there. That's one of those, like, see John, call, call John. But in distress, the Lord answered me. Well, that implies relationship, love. And he answered me. In a large place. So distress is a tight place. You know, say you put me in one of them toilets and shut the door. You know, that's kind of a tight spot for me. 
Boy, this is a broader room. I can move around and dance like I did at the Kaylee, Keeley. Still don't know how to say it. I say Kaylee. Kaylee. Kaylee? I've heard Keeley. I think you guys don't even agree on your own accent. I mean, I've heard Kaylee and Keeley. Okay, whatever it was. I, I was, Derek, I was, I, was, I was cutting a rug. I was cut. Well, Quinn knows I struggled. I was, in a, I was in distress that night. But the Lord answered me in a large place. This is to encourage your faith. Next time you get in a tight spot or bad mood or exhausted or the faith just goes out and went like, wait a minute, the Lord will answer. It is best that you have your Bible open at the chapter, chapter Psalm 118. Those five verses give the theme and purpose to be unfolded in the balance of the psalm. Psalms, as you well know, are ancient songs. Across the street at Mud's church, they sing psalms. And I've, sort of been, I've been over there a time or two on Sunday night. No music, nothing. They just sing them. And it's hilarious. It's, it's okay. Maybe we'll do that one Sunday here. Those five verses give the theme and purpose to be unfolded in the balance of the psalms. Psalms are ancient songs. I asked Sunday, what is your song? I shared Mary's song. Hannah has a song. I shared my song. You know, you don't, you can just put in your homework assignment back on the red chair, and I know you've done your homework assignment and written out your song. And I don't really give out homework. But the songs are important. They were chanted as one part melody. A great deal of the worship in the synagogues of today, this was written in 1953, consists in the chanting of the Psalms and the law and other portions of scripture and writings. Even with our music, most of the music we sing here honors God. It's not just make me feel good and all about me. It has good theology in it, which is important. So it's a very blessed thing to have in the meetings of God's children much from the word of God. Again, I encourage you, if you feel led, stand up and read a psalm. Stand up and maybe not read Psalm 119, but pick a shorter psalm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? Because he is good. I'm almost done with this paragraph. In what way is he good? It's good to ask questions. His mercy, his kindness, is forever endless, bottomless. I one time, I, I one time asked God, have I exhausted your mercy? Have I spent up all the blood of Jesus? Because it, it sort of felt like I had. And the answer is no. No. His mercy is forever endless. Do what? Give thanks. According to that immense little Psalm 117, our praise should be clear and bright and resounding. It should be a praise of giving unto the eternal being, our Father God, all the glory which is his. It might be well to bring that psalm in here again as we had it in the previous chapter. With clear, bright sounds of rejoicing, praise the eternal being of na all nations. Glorify him with all praises due him, all peoples. Why? Because mightily prevailing upon us is his mercy, and the unchanging faithfulness of his truth is forever. Endless. Hallelujah. Because mightily, mightily prevailing upon us is his mercy, and the unchanging faithfulness of his truth. Does God treat you one day? One way one day, and, or does he treat you a different way the next day? Is, can you depend on God? His mercy is unchanging. And that's a truth. That next paragraph, that kind of praise has to well up out of a full heart. What kind of heart is full? A grateful heart. We're talking about gratitude. My wife hung some, hung some pictures today. It really touched me. And I turned like, thank you. You know, the apartment feels better now. Like, oh, that, you know, we have pictures on the wall. I didn't quite get around to that the first month here. <laughs> what kind of heart is full? A grumpy heart, a murmuring heart, a heart that has a bad attitude, a heart that's not pleased. No, a grateful heart. One in which is a purpose to bring unto God an offering acceptable. 
what is an acceptable offering thinks. Simply real things. And humans, we can argue about anything, but so far, I mean, this chapter is not, it'd be hard to argue about any of this. <coughs> Continuing, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, I thank thee, Father. So we want to be like Jesus. You know, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, that's all I ask. To be like him. You ever heard that one, Derek? All through life journeys from earth to glory, that's all I ask, to be like him. Maybe it's an American song, but yes, yeah, a, a, a song. So Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, I thank thee, Father. Jesus was the great giver of thanks. In his great mercy, the Father in wisdom had hidden the things transpiring in the work of Christ Jesus from the worldly wise and had unveiled them to the hearts of babes. I'm important to grasp this. For that, Jesus gave thanks. The things done which were so hidden and so revealed were the mercies of God, as we read in Psalm 119, verse 41, let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. The name Jesus in Hebrew, the, the name Jesus is in Hebrew, Yahshua. The word salvation as, is, as in the Psalms is Yeshua. Let thy mercies come unto me, O Lord, even thy y y Yeshua, or excuse me, Yahshua, according to thy word. The perfect thanks came from the lips of Yeshua, Jesus, for the Yahshua salvation revealed unto babes, but hid from the wise in their own eyes and from the prudent of the world, for they glory in their own wisdom and forethought and strength and do not know the Yeshua, the, the Yahshua salvation of God. Quinn's learning Chinese and I think Chinese may be easier than Hebrew, but we'll keep going. Now this last sentence, I believe is correct. In this final desperate last hour of the history of the Gentile world, it will be a calamity to the soul of anyone to fail to connect together the words mercy and Yahshua, mercy and salvation. For they are the fulfilling of God's will according to his word. Outside of mercy, there is nothing but wrath, corruption, and destruction. Inside of the mercy, there is Yahshua, Yeshua, yeah, Yahshua, salvation, Jesus. I'm about to get these words confused. Yeshua is salvation. Thus it could be said, Yeshua is Yahshua. So Jesus is salvation. Let's just... Jesus is salvation, and that's the meaning of the cross, and he is. Thus it could be said, Yeshua is Yahshua, as expressed in the Psalms, come to me thy mercy, even thy Yahshua, according to thy word. We will find out a little of what this expression means, according to thy word. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy is to always endless. Israel, house of Aaron, anyone else, hallelujah. Whoever fears the Lord, let them that fear the Lord say that his mercy is forever. All right, all right, all right. Then say it now. O oh, give thanks, let's do this together. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy is forever. According to his word, they that fear the Lord should say this, his mercy is forever. And as some seem bored with the saying of it, pressing upon us that we should talk about Jesus, then we answer, that is just what we are doing, for God's mercy is Jesus. It would be well for you to examine your heart and see whether you are among that number, them that fear the Lord. So here's an invitation to examine your heart. It's not exactly a rebuke. It's, he's just saying, examine your heart. And that is a good examination. If the heart is not interested in thanking God, if the heart is not at all thinking of God, T-H-I-N-K-I-N-G, 
then you could have heart trouble, as we call it. Next paragraph. In the first four verses of this psalm, it is repeated four times that his mercy is forever. <coughs> and the whole psalm is about this giving of thanks. It concludes with a fifth injunction to give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy is forever. If we are not thanks givers according to his word, is it that we should want to please people and silence the word mercy? We have seen in the preceding psalm that we are to make a clear and bright sound of praise unto the central theme of the truth of God. The dilemma then is, should we please people in this matter or act, or act according to his word? Verse five, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. God had that fish burp out. Jonah, I don't know if he tickled his belly or kicked him, but he kicked, he, Jonah came out right where he needed to come out. You know, if he'd have spit him out in deeper waters, he'd have been a goner. So God sets us in a place of safety, which is another reason to give thanks. Yes, we thank God that Jesus died 2,000 years ago. We really do. But in the daily life, I thank God for today. You know, I thank God, you know, we maybe found a drum kit. Yeah, that's a hot rumor now. Like on Facebook Marketplace or like dirt cheap. So, in all things, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. So we, we kind of bump up against, are we going to do scripture or not? Can we say, listen, okay, this guy was on fire for God. He's a minister. He backslid. He fell into sin horribly. God saved him. He's all excited. Good for him. Good for this fella. <laughs> He's just bringing scripture right in front of our face. And that one right there. This is, you know, to give thanks is the will of God concerning you. So, verse 5. Page 10, left-hand column, last paragraph. I called upon the Lord in distress, in it. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The words and set me are supplied to fill out the English, but perhaps are just as well not used. The word distress means the distress of extremely straitened circumstances, such as a siege. We have an expression, tight spot which is near to its meaning. It is used of troubles and of a siege in war and of the distress resorting from a siege. The word large is good, but broad is better, meaning wide, expanded. So I called upon the Lord in a tight spot in the distress of a siege, and he answered me in a broad, expanded place he came into the tight spot and it became very broad. I think I've used this example before. King David with the Ark of the Covenant. A man dies, it doesn't work out. They do it wrong, not perfectly. He's in a real tight spot because this is the, the Ark of the Covenant. And he's King David. So this doesn't quite look good on him and he realizes something is wrong. And we've been there spiritually, something is wrong. Maybe we can't put our finger on it. Like, what is it? And David had to go back and cry out to the Lord in that tight spot. And that's why you see him dancing because the Lord answered. And that fellowship with God had been reunited. And we've all had moments like that, I trust. And it's an amazing mercy of God when he comes. And you can even call it set us free in the 80s and 90s. There's, in America, there's a lot of ministries for being delivered, deliverance ministries, and that's fine if it's of God. The Apostle Paul, Christ delivered people, cast out demons, and that is legitimate, of course. And there's many days I need to be delivered of me in here. I need that deliverance from the world, the flesh, and the devil so that I can worship God. Page 10, right-hand column, I'll pause here pretty soon to ask for feedback before we continue. It's another shorter chapter, but we're doing great. The rest of the psalm, and this is a Bible study, by the way, 
is around this central theme. It is one of the most amazing grouping of words and ideas ever put down in writing. Among the mighty truths included are the appearance and rejection of Messiah, the wonderful quote unquote day connected with it and with him, the gate or entrance of or to the Lord himself, the divinely appointed words which pertain to his returning again to the house left desolate and a picture of the problems and trials of one who is learning to have nothing to lean on but the Lord. Which pertain to his return again to the house left desolate and a picture of the problems. Do you have problems? Yes. Trials? Yes. Of one who is, who is learning to have nothing to lean on but Jesus the Lord. Are you a good student? Do you learn well? Are you learning to lean on Jesus? Leaning, leaning. You ever heard that one, Derek? Yeah. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, do, 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 leaning. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. It is the one who gives thanks for the mercy from the heart and whose lips issue forth the words about it who is walking down the pathway of the verses of this psalm. It is the one who is doing the first verses and who calls on the Lord in a tight and hopeless spot, who finds the wonder, W-O-N-D-E-R, he answered me, caps. He answered me. I think about a pastor friend of mine who as a young boy was exposed to things he should have never been exposed to and it troubled him for a lot of his life but then I think when he got in his 30s he prayed and he called me on the phone I'll never forget his voice he set me free <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like a drowning man who's been saved and that's what he's saying. He answered me. And as I'm getting to know each one of you, can I say he has answered for you and is answering? The fact that you're here, you know, you're here not because of me, but you're trying to understand and learn to have nothing to lean on but, Jesus, but, but, but the Lord. We all like props. We all like... When I had my knee surgery, I had crutches, which I needed crutches. And there's times, even a Christian, they need crutches. But ultimately, it's the Lord that we are to lean on. He answered me, capital, capital letters, and the tight spot becomes a broad, ample space. Why? Very important question. How? How? How did that happen? He answered me. He came into the tight spot with the besieged one. We have it in the Gospels. Lord, we are perishing, cried the disciples of little faith on the storm-tossed lake of Galilee. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said, Peace, be still. And there was a great calm. The raging of the waves subsided into calm. He was there. Now let's just think for a minute. I'll pause. Say that the, the, the storm of your life doesn't ever calm down. Doesn't seem like it. You go day to day, mild frustration, some anger. It's right underneath the surface. You pray, it doesn't make any difference, supposedly. What do you do? What do y'all what do y'all drink around here? Whiskey? In Scotland, is that what is that the drink? You go, just tie one on, as we say in the states, and come fumbling out of a bar. Is that no? You don't do that. Do you just what? What do you do? I guess I'll answer my own question. I kind of go at God. I'm not very happy. I'm very mad. You already know I'm mad. Help. 
you know, I'm very mad, and nothing's working. Don't tell me to read the Bible. I've already sort of read it. I'm mad. By the way, do you know I'm mad? <laughs> I mean, but there's something called a breakthrough. You know, it may not happen immediately or the first day, the first month. In the book of Daniel, the prayer was answered after 21 days. Well, I don't like that. I mean, no, give me fast food Christianity. I just go through McDonald's. I'll take a Big Mac and fries. And I still don't know what you call fries, crisp, chips. I do not. I've given up on it. I, I'm not going to try to learn it. Crisp or potato chips, correct? Yeah, forget it. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know that was, I mean, you know, there there is you know, there is a river which flows from Calvary. And either that's true, either this is true, or yeah, let's just go to McDonald's and get five Big Macs, not the whiskey, but let's just binge on food. That's that's kind of fun to do. Or binge on movies. I've watched a bunch of movies, just movie after movie after movie. We've all sort of been there. Now here, will you pardon a personal testimony? Looking back down, then I want to hear from you guys. So, so this is not just theology. Page 10, sec second column on the right. Will you pardon a testimony? Will you pardon a personal testimony here? During the years since 1944, I've experienced that great calm that broad place many hundreds of times through siege and overwhelming onslaughts against my soul. My heart says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy is to always forever endless. I like that paragraph. I'm glad he put it in there, because otherwise I can look at him like, okay, you came back to God, good for you, praise God, but... Maybe God, you know, took it easy on you. Maybe when you came back, it was smooth sailing and you were just all hyper. No, he just says, through siege and overwhelming onslaught, onslaughts. Obviously, the enemy, the devil, was not happy for this man to come back to God. So you think the devil was just going to leave him alone? No. So his testimony is even when he came back, there was, you know, we sang this today. You know, do you have trials and temptations? But he is saying that he experienced a great calm during the trials. Thoughts, comments, songs, rapping. I don't think you do rapping here. I, well, I'm not into rapping either. Never been a rapping, a rap fan. But really, any comments? Is any of this making sense? Is it all gibberish? Is it all just a bunch of words flowing together? Well, it's funny you said that because, yeah, it is. But it is funny because you know, that verse, you know, for, you know, for, forgetting the, or is it putting those things, forgetting those things which are behind us. You know, the Apostle Paul, I press on toward the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. You know, put, forgetting those things which are behind us. Now, the memory is crazy. The memory is like a computer. I mean, my memory is sometimes... I wish I could like tone it down, you know. And this man's testimony is even when he came back to God, he felt some, some not really, he, he sensed something as he was praying alone, and a thought was impressed upon him, you've not repented. 
And he's like, uh, oh, Lord God, I mean, okay. And I, re and I repent again. And then the clear impression from God came, no, no, you have repented. The devil comes as an angel of light. That's not my voice. You've already repented, man. You've repented to your, your wife, your children, the church, the whole world. I'm believing for, and it's, I gotta be careful, like I, there, there's a healing of the memory. How did Paul go forward? Didn't he see Stephen in his mind's eye every day? I consented to his death. I mean, couldn't, didn't that, couldn't that just debilitate him? Like, you know, shut up, Paul. Yeah, what am I thinking? I mean, the memory. He's seeing the boy. I mean, he, I don't know how old Stevens was. Stevens probably under 40 years of age. He wasn't that old. Getting stoned. How did he reconcile that memory with going forward in Christ? That's a work of grace. That's a mercy. I don't have a patent answer, but that's probably maybe why he said, putting those things which are behind me, I press on. Otherwise, if you live in regret, regret will eat you up from the inside out. It just will. And whatever we've done, Lord knows I've made a lot of mistakes. It's under the blood. I'm not to carry that. You know, in the book, um, Pilgrim's Progress, Pilgrim's Progress, Christian has that heavy load on his back. Then finally, God releases him of that load. Bunyan's book, John Bunyan. We all can carry our stuff around. And the song you sang tonight is, you know, why? Because we do not carry everything to him in prayer. So Paul, I, I, I imagine more than one time, had to carry that to Jesus. Like, Jesus, yes, I consented to Stephen's death. Yes, I blew it. My goodness, I was killing Christians. What can I do now? Stephen's dead. You can go forward in Christ. All things are washed away. Behold, all things are new. Well, that's a bumper sticker. That just sounds good. That's Bible. Now, we can choose to believe it or not. We can choose to walk around and beat ourselves up. Or just say, Lord God, I'm in a tight place here. Maybe even with a past. Help me. Because the soul needs to breathe. We need some oxygen in our soul. And then, you know, bitterness can come in there. And so I don't have all the answers, but God really does. He does. Any comments or thoughts before we continue? Gwen Noel? Thank you for your honesty. Yeah, it's okay. When I was your age, I sat under in my dad's services, and I played a lot of tic-tac-toe. And I'm really good at tic-tac-toe, because I played every Sunday <laughs> with Keith Taylor. He's my buddy. And yet, by the time I got to 11, I started, like, trying to, I was picking up on a few sentences, like, hey, what, what is all this stuff? What are they talking about? Okay, God, God, God. And then more and more, I wanted to listen. And that's how I got saved. So I love your honesty. To simplify it, what, th what this man is saying is that scripture tells us to give thanks to God, T-H-A-N-K. Why do you and Ryan say thank you to us? You're kind of polite kids, huh? What? Okay, well how much more, the scripture says, the Father in heaven? How do you learn to play shinty? Which is a different, Gaelic sport in the Highlands. How, how do you learn Chinese? Can you sing Jesus Loves Me in Chinese? Go for it. Not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot. One, two, three, go. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, Quinn and Well, how did you learn that? Right. How do we learn to depend on the Lord Christ? Practice. You just, you keep trial and error. Oh, I blew it again. Oh, I did it again. Oh, I'm living back in the past. Oh, 
if I just would have turned right instead of turning left. Oh my word. If, 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 if. Well, you can go crazy. Or you can say, you know what? I want to learn. Your mercies are new every day, it says in Lamentations. Help me to live in the day. So while it may be gibberish, Chinese is pretty much gibberish to me. Why don't you take me to a Chinese restaurant, a little sweet and sour chicken, some egg roll. That I can eat. I like Chinese food. But thank you for your honesty. I always want you to be honest. And I will, as your father, let's keep looking at the words in the pay, on the page. And even if you get one sentence, I'm pleased. And so, thank you. All right, down below. When he answers the call of the one who lives in verses 1 through 4, then he... He comes into this tight spot with the besieged one. He is the answer. He changes the place from a destruction to an abundant freedom, mercy. This psalm is describing the working and abundance of that mercy. Was Lazarus in a tight spot? Dead? It's kind of a tight spot. How many days was, was, was he dead? Four? Yeah, the morning of the fourth. So there's three going on, on four. Because his sister Martha said, But Lord, he stinketh now. You know, he stinketh. And Jesus, like, Oh, just, so, <laughs> take me to him. Jesus wasn't worried about his smell, he's going to raise him from the dead. Does Jesus raise us from our dead works, our dead mood, our dead faith? I say we. I'm right here with you. Sometimes my faith is dead. Well, he has to resurrect that. Verse 6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? As long as you remain a giver of thanks and a doer of mercy, you're continually found of the Lord. Now, is that a hyper sentence? Let's, let's look at this. And I'm fine to disagree with anything. Oh, I'm an American. We like to argue. Although I heard the Scottish also can be <clears throat> stubborn. Verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? As long as you, Jennifer, remain a giver of thanks and a doer of mercy, you are continually found of the Lord. He inhabits the praises of his people. When I thank my wife for hanging the pictures today, if I may ask Jennifer, how did that make you feel? Appreciated. And I really did appreciate it. His delivering presence makes a great certainty known. He is on my side. Because that lie that comes at you, no one cares. If it's to be, it's up to me. I got to do this, I got to do that, I this, I that, I, 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 I. He is on my side is a different statement. This is Bible truth. This is a Hebrew idiom which comes a little closer than just on my side. It says the Lord is to me. Again, he read his Bible in Hebrew and the New Testament in Greek every day with an eighth grade education. That was a mercy and a miracle, but he did. So he's saying in the Hebrew, he is on my side is accurate, but he is to me may be better. He, the Lord is to me, which in ordinary, everyday speech simply means is mine. The Lord is mine. And in other connections, it is so translated many times in the Old Covenant. The Lord is mine. Comparing scripture with scripture, I will not fear. What can man do to me, unto me? It is the sense, S-E-N-S-E, -E, of being possessed by him that releases from all fear. In 2 Timothy 1.7, God's not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. The mercy and thinking heart comes to know that presence that possession, that rest from fear in the ceasing of works of self. Because you can't work this up. You can't self-generate it. Now, we can praise the Lord when we don't feel like it. It's called a sacrifice of praise. Verse 7, 
more encouraging truth, the Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. The words my desire are supplied and are not in the actual wording of the passage. In view of what has preceded, the thought is that I will see the same thing upon them that hate me. What thing? The effect of the presence of the Lord. Thanks for his mercy was given. He answered with his transforming presence in the tight, distressing condition. He proved that the Lord is mine. In the thanks and dependence on his mercy, I am his. Therefore, I shall see the same on the haters, just himself and whatever he wishes to do. For I see him. It is the eventual and eternal position of the mercy and heart to always see him. Therefore, I shall see him upon them that hate me. How did little David take down Goliath? I mean, really, he had already had the experience of conquering the lion and the bear. But all of Israel, his brothers, everyone, King Saul, they were terrified of this giant. What was it in David that produced no fear? He had none. They tried to give him the armor, and he's, it didn't fit. Saul was a tall man, and, and David's like, I don't need all this stuff. I mean, what do you think? I mean, what was in him? When Goliath said, today your head will be on a platter, and he barks right back, and no, today birds will eat your head. David was right. <laughs> yeah, when, in the Hebrew, yeah, in the Hebrew, David's words, exact words were, is there not a cause? You know, how can this uncircumcised Philistine defy the name of the living God? So he was willing to die like Esther, you know, the book of Esther. If I die, I die. Well, that's a release from all fear. In the New Testament, you know, it says some are in bondage for fear of death. They fear death. But Jesus conquered death. The sting of death. I believe what he's saying is, is once you see the Lord and are, and are found by him, it releases from all fear. If I die, I go to heaven. If I, like the Apostle Paul said, it's better for me to be on earth, I'd rather go to heaven, but he saw the need to stay home. Well, in these last days, don't turn on page nine. In this final desperate last hour of the history of the Gentile world, men's heart, it says in the New Testament, in the end times will fail them because of fear. They'll just get overwhelmed at the magnitude of destruction and force. And, and so this is important, this little tiny study. And yet David had no fear. Perfect love cast out fear. I quoted 2 Timothy 1.7 earlier. It's a spirit. God's not giving you a spirit of fear. But on the other hand, you know, he's giving you, not, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power. David had power. This man had power. And of love and of a sound disciplined mind. A disciplined mind studies. Does that wrong? Yeah, I need to study. Verses 8 through 13, a hallelujah chorus in itself. Better it is to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man or rulers. Surrounded by all nations, the enemies are cut off in the Lord's name. Mama used to just do that a lot. Mama just say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And you know, I was a little kid, like, what in the world's wrong? And, but she was fighting some war, and she was serious. And in Jesus' name, devil, get out of here. And I thought, yeah, go ahead and get out of here. I mean, I, you know, but she was determined, you know. He's just singing the song, Oh, I would not be denied, I would not be denied. Yeah, that's another song. <laughs> it's good to have songs in the heart. In the Lord's name, they encircled and they surrounded, but hallelujah, the thanksgiving is in my heart. My enemies are cut off. 
They surrounded me like bees. But as a fire of thorns is quenched in a moment, so they are cut off. They are cut off from contact with the mercy lover and thinker by the Lord's presence. What was Mary Magdalene seeking? Jesus. Even dead Jesus. Jesus wanted the body. We've heard it preached. She wanted Jesus dead or alive. Well, what about, they could have arrested her. What about, you know, the Romans? Like, take that woman, follow her Jesus, crucify her. She had no fear. I believe that's what the word means, I surrender all. Page 11, second column at the top. Four, in his name is a place to dwell. So this is not temporary. This is not in and out. This is not, there is a place to dwell. The giver of thanks according to thy word comes to know that place by and by. I told Jennifer tonight with tears and I meant it and it was a great mercy of grace. I am enjoying God. <laughs> I've not always been able to say that. I've had a unique relationship with God and we all have. You've had your own relationship. But to be able to look at her tonight and say, I'm enjoying God. Well, I mean, well, we're Christians. I'm a Christian, but I'm not enjoying being a Christian. And I don't do half what the Bible says, of course. And I can't without his grace. And I'm just a mess. And we all are a mess. But, you know, God, all of his laws seem so hard to do. And But just to come to that place where I'm learning to, to have nothing but God. I can't obey without God's help. These kids can't eat food without us ordering from Asda. By the way, we're really enjoying ordering from Asda. Not trying to plug Asda. Tesco's fine, and, but, well, the first time we went to Sansbury's, I'm carrying these big old milk jugs. I'm thinking, you know, wait a minute. I have a backpack loaded with groceries, two, three or four bags. They're like, are you okay? You know, being, yeah, I'm okay. It's killing me. And I get home, I'm like, this is silly. I'll pay extra for delivery. And so we do Asda now. We're very excited. How vicious was the thrusting stroke of evils aimed to tumble me over helpless. But the same one, the known one, helped me through it all. It pays to go through and learn these things. There's a great sentence. You can underline it. It pays to go through and learn, learn these things. When you don't go through and don't learn, things, can, things can, can seem okay for a while. Okay, like the devil's not bothering me. And, you know, kind of in Spanish, it's called a CSC. I don't know Spanish too well, but I know it better than Chinese. So if someone says, how are you, know, you know, how are you doing? Como esta? I used to stutter when I was a kid. Como esta? Then you can say, I see, I see. That means ah, I'm doing okay. Not bad, not good, okay. And if you don't go through, you can do that for weeks and months, maybe even years. I see, I see. How are you doing spiritually? Okay. Eventually, you stay on that path. My experience is you're going to get your head you know, just chopped off. The Satan's going to come, and at a time when you're unaware, boom, a trap door. And then, ah. So it pays to go through in the daily life and learn these learn these things we're wrapping it up verses 14 through 16 hallelujah 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 the lord is my strength the lord is my song the lord is my it's become my salvation yeshua in the tents of the just those of verses 1 through 6 is a voice of hallelujah 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 rejoicing in salvation the lord's own right hand his power doeth valiantly Doeth valiantly, doeth valiantly. One way to learn, Rana Quinn, know is to repeat, 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 repeat. Just keep repeating it, keep repeating it. Verses 17 through 21, now arises the great conviction based on the certainty which the understanding of mercy gives. I shall live and not die and declare his works. What works? His mercy, which is to always. The Lord has chastened me sore. Maybe we can all say that. I sure can, and this man could. Yes, but he did not give me over to death, nor did he give Job over to death. He said, Satan, you can do anything to him, but you, you can't take his life. 
He did not give me over to death. I live. I shall live. It is the conviction of life, which mercy in the doing imparts. Open to me the gates of righteousness. By them I will enter and I will praise the Lord. This word praise is the same word as in verses 1 and 29, where the rendering is give thanks. The gate of righteousness is flung open wide for the giver of thanks. And it is the gate to the Lord, the Lord's gate, the door to him. Quinn and Ryan, if you read Psalms and read Psalms and read Psalms, as I've been doing right now, they can all kind of go together. They can all, like, it, they're very similar in some ways. Like, wait, is, how is 28 different from 22? Oh, no, 22 is different. And I understand that. And this can be like, okay, praise the Lord. And, but, again, like Chinese, the more you do it, the Psalms in their own distinctiveness are starting to mean more to me, different sections, 50s and 30s and 40s. I will praise thee, thank thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation, my Yeshua. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. All something. Well, something you go. But it's a great song. <laughs> yeah, even the freedom to start a song that I don't know all the words to and not care. One thing what you guys think of me is pure mercy. You know, I, you know I, it's freedom. And you, it, you can laugh with me and you can even laugh at me. It doesn't bother me at all anymore. And again, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Doom, doom. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Why do we, we haven't done it here a whole lot, why do some churches repeat choruses? Are they just trying to stretch out the time? I mean, is the, is the minister not ready yet? He's in the toilet preparing the sermon. Bingo. Yes. Yes. Right. And I told Kenny, she led music. I'm like, that song, Psalm 34, I almost, from the, whatever that beat bop thing says, says, sing it again. But I thought, no, I'm going to let Kenny kind of, establish yourself but exactly so if you don't feel it well do you feel Chinese the first time you, so you, you know yeah there, there's grooves grooves in our hearts and minds and it takes some like working some new grooves amen the balance of the psalm we leave he it tells of him and in reality, the whole psalm is an opening of light. Boy, I wish we believe. I wish I believed this more. It's an opening of light <coughs> into the inner life of the rejected stone himself, our Jesus. We are in the days now when the God of heaven is readying the hearts of the remnant in Scotland and in Israel and around the world to say. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The end of it is described in verse 29 with the preceding verse. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is forever. Palm Sunday. Every day. Preached a sermon one time about that. Maybe I need it again. You know, now they're taking their coats and worship. But every day, here comes our king. And if you don't feel it, or if it's gibberish, hold steady. Don't give up. Final thoughts or comments. Before Derek comes and leads us in a song. Thank you for coming. It helps me. It does. You're helping me just by coming. And I'll admit, it's a different study. It, it's not glossy. It's not shiny. It's not cool. It's just kind of an old-fashioned Bible study. 
but my soul needs the Bible. So let's pray. Father, thank you. We believe you're, you're here with us. We, I just believe that you have been here with us. You see what we're doing. You see each individual heart. You know exactly what, what each heart needs. I don't pretend to know. But you're a need-meeting God. So many examples throughout Scripture, especially in the Gospels, Jesus seeing Zacchaeus, seeing, talking to the woman at the well, knowing exactly what the need is. Talking about past. The woman at the well, how did she ever get free? Words of Jesus. Just set her free. Boom. Are you different? Are you limited now? No, you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, Lord, just keep my heart open to hearing and each heart here. The praise of the glory of Jesus. Amen. Brother Derek. things they shall be added unto you.
she keepers the kingdom of God and his righteousness and his things shall be added unto you oh hallelujah hallelujah yeah